Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode. Znats is getting close. It's a couple weeks away. I've just been dealing with a few things with the car. I've been needed to get it done. I'm low maintenance at times. Downright lazy. So I got some maintenance items to get done before I take the trip to four hour drive down to Georgia, Counton, Cal Cal somewhere, wherever the Z ones is. And among most of those things, today we're going to take care of spark plugs and a throttle body. Lately, I've been having what I would call is a limp throttle body. I'm still diagnosing it, still researching it, but I know I'm overdue on the spark plugs and I know I'm overdoing the cleaning. But what's occurring is that every now and then when I'm driving heavy or I'm driving hard, sometimes the RPM will either take a while to bring down, like if I'm in gear, it'll come down with the gear, with the RPMs of the engine. But if I just drop it in neutral and the engine itself is winding down, it just floats. Like the throttle buddy's taking a while to close to kill the engine and bring it down. Another thing is during gear changes and stuff like that start stops you would smash the accelerator and expect the car to go and it'll just kind of like it'll just die it'll just limp it'll just it'll just sputter not sputter but you you know how your butt dying on your body like your passengers don't know but you know how the car is going to react so your body instinctively holds itself pulls left pulls right doing a hard shift you won't move or anything like that you know what i'm talking about so that's what's happening is that I know the car normally would launch after I hit the, the throttle and nothing happens, it bogs, so I'm, my body is just driving foul. It's, it's weird to explain, but it's all all natural, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> but I digress. We got mostly everything laid out. We got a bunch of tools and everything. We need the plugs. OEM guys, get OEM stuff. I got to start. We got to get the strap bar off. We gotta get the intakes out and get enough clearance to get to these plugs. Let's get started on that. I was proceeding to take off the intakes and then I was looking at it off to unplug the mass airflow. I'm also possibly going to unplug the throttle bodies. So whenever time you mess around or change or unplugging any sensors, go ahead, disconnect the battery, let the power go. I am however still charging it because on a later step of the whole relearn process, we got to make sure our battery is fully charged. All right, guys, we got all this junk out of the way. Looking at these two spark plugs, definitely gonna have to remove the throttle button. I don't think I could weasel it out with that in any way. I was hoping I could. Looking at some of the stuff online, I was thought I may be able to, but there's absolutely no way. So let's go ahead, let's pull these throttle bodies, get them out of the way so we have full access to these spark plugs. So you guys see how on this side it looks it's dirty but it doesn't look that dirty. But on the reverse side, man, that definitely needs some cleaning. 
So we'll get it done. Something to notice also in a previous video, we deleted our coolant from going through the trial body. So that's why I'm so easily able to just unbolt them, take them out of the car. Remember, if you're doing this, you may have coolant lines going into here. So you may just have to put the throttle body aside. Yeah, once again, the back is way dirty than how the front is. Throttle bars out of the way. Like I said in the previous video, we've rerouted the water lines so they won't go through the throttle body anymore. So we're able to just totally remove them. Now we have nice, clear access to the spark plugs, all well, the coil packs. Uh, except this breather hose here, which should be simple to move. But all three on each side is readily accessible. One thing to note, we all had like, Back in the day thinking, we all had these like 5.8 spark plugs, but these spark plugs are the newer cars. They're very small. I bought this a long time ago from my wife's Mini Cooper. It's a 14 millimeter spark plug holder. And actually these are 14 millimeters also. So just take note that if you haven't done it on this car before, you've done it in previous cars, this car is definitely a smaller size. I'll put a link to where I got this in the description. Just go ahead and just snatch it now because when you're doing this later, you might forget about it. And it's nice to just have it on hand. I kind of got lucky, so I didn't have to go run out, buy a spark plug holder. And come. A lot of people say just use a regular socket and then use like a hose to pull it out. Yeah, that works, but putting it back in, it's kind of iffy. I, I'd rather get a proper spark plug socket. So don't forget, 14 millimeter on this car, guys. Now these nuts and bolts are going into some plastic. So just be very careful when you're tightening it back up. There wasn't much torque at all in the, in the tightening. So just be careful going back on. You don't want to strip it. I don't know if you'll be able to see down the side there or not. But they're nice and clean, there's no oil. Unplugged the harness because I didn't have enough length in the harness to actually leave the coils connected. So we went ahead and unplugged them, took them out.
let's take a look at these. Ideally, what you want is a tan color and spark plugs. Now the cars right now, 9,400,000, sorry, 94,000 miles on the chassis. These are original plugs. Here we go. A new one. Compared to one. Both OEM. Now new plugs come with these protectors because new plugs are supposed to come um, pre-gapped. So they're supposed to have the correct gapping on them. Back in the day you didn't have this. Back in the day you had to have a feeler gauge to put between there and make sure you have the correct gap. be very careful when you put it in you don't want to hit the tip and you don't want to mess that gap up so last thing you want to do is drop it on the tip if you ever drop it either buy a new one or go get some feeler gauges and regap it Let's get the coils back in. Remember, tighten it back up, nice and easy. Probably not even snug. Ninety-four thousand miles, really not that bad. Mostly tan color, good plugs. Get some burnage and stuff there. Did need some changing, but overall, really not that bad. What I want to do now, I want to clean the inside of the throttle body. You saw on the back sides how, <coughs> on the lower half, it was really dirty. So I'm gonna go with a nice clean rag inside there with some throttle body cleaner and clean the inside. And then we're gonna sit down and we're gonna clean these bad boys. So we're gonna get a trial bar cleaner right up on the rag. And you're gonna wipe the bottom of the manifold.
Okay, with these guys, you'll see there's the dirt ring around the plate. And then you see all the dirt and sediment behind the plate. And how the car works and how the idle adjusts is that as the ring gets dirty and it gets clogged up and the space narrows, the car tunes itself naturally, opening every so slightly. So with all the cars, you have to adjust the idle. With these, because it's, it's drive by wire, it automatically opens it to a certain degree to allow the proper idle so it won't bog down. The problem is, after we go ahead and we clean all this gunk out, the car doesn't know how to readjust to close itself. It only knows how to open itself. So we have to do the really annoying relearn process. But more on that later. Let's go ahead and get these guys cleaned up. First of all, once again, try to buddy intake cleaner. Spray on the rag, it's gonna wipe it down. I think it's time for the toothbrush. Close this slowly, don't let it slap close. Spray, trial bar clean on your toothbrush. Hey. Okay, while it's, it dries fast, man, and, it's, and the gunk sticks back in there. So while it's wet, use your claw to pull it up. So see that all around, nice and clean. The butterfly itself is clean. Both sides. I just pull slowly. Don't let it shot. Butterfly is cleaned up. Everything is looking. It has some staining. I'm, I could just wipe that down now. I'm gonna do that. But big difference to how it was. Let me go ahead and clean it up. Let me show you the ring. Yeah. So here you can see the ring. The two brush and a cloth to remove the residue. We'll try trial buddy cleaner. Well guys, that was honestly a pain in the butt to clean. It really was. I would say one tip. As soon as you spray it with carb cleaner and start scrubbing, immediately do like two three scrubs and then wipe because as soon as this carb cleaner evaporates and it evaporates really fast it just dries back and becomes a hard deposit so as soon as you start scrubbing while it's still wet use your cloth to pick the dirty stuff up huge tip right there it'll save a lot of time you can see now kind of 
there's a little light gap. Before you're seeing no light gap because it was all dirty and the edges were cruddy. But now you could go in and you could definitely see that little gap much bigger where air will pass and go through. We definitely, definitely going to have to be doing the relearn process on these things. But you saw me take them off. Oh yeah, you can see definitely see this one. Whew, this guy was dirty. Look at him. Look how big this one opened up compared to the other one. See, this one is not that much. It's open too, but yeah. My hands all dried up, couldn't stuff from the cleaner, so ignore that ashiness. But let me go ahead and get it back in the car. You don't need to see that, you see them come off. Let's get everything buttoned up, get everything back to how it was when we found it. And then let's talk about this really big annoying relearn process. <laughs> And it's a three-part system. The first two is rather easy. The last part is where it kind of trips everyone up. And the last part is when you got to be super careful. But let's go over it. We have the accelerator pedal release position learn procedure. I'm not going to, I'll have this linked into the description. It's from UpRev themselves. And the accelerator pedal release position procedure you make sure the accelerator pedal is fully released no pressure no mat or anything's on it you turn the ignition switch on that's ignition so technically you have to hit the button twice the other thing is for manual guys make sure you're in neutral and make sure for automatic guys you're in park now when you turn the ignition on like I said, two times to make sure that it's on, and then you hit it again, make sure it goes into on, because before it's accessories, then it goes into on. Make sure I turn that stuff off. Turn. Turn everything off. Unplug my dash cams. I need to pull the fuse of the air ride, but I'll do that just now because we need one part is that we need to go and put the car up to operating temperature. So I won't do the air ride yet. But for this first part, let me switch the car back off. Heard the click click on the um, trial bars already. Okay, so at the accelerator pedal release position learning procedure, we turn the ignition switch on, wait for at least two seconds. Turn the ignition switch off, wait for at least 10 seconds. Turn the ignition switch on, wait for at least 2 seconds, and then turn it off, wait for at least 10 seconds. We'll probably turn the car back on. And that will go ahead and do accelerated pedal release position learning procedure. Let me get my phone so we can actually time the 10 seconds. Sometimes in your head, you don't really think about how long or how soon or after the time pass, but I want to make sure we do this stuff properly. All right, so I got my 10 second timer, okay? Go ahead, turn it on, wait for two seconds, then. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. I'll turn it off. Ten seconds. Turn it back on. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Turn it off. Ten seconds. Okay. So the accelerator pedal release position should be learned now. The next thing we have to do, guys, is we have to do the throttle valve closed position learning. Now this one is the only reason why I didn't move the car before I start 
um, working on the spark plugs and put it in the middle like I normally do is because we want to have the car at overnight temperatures or low either less than 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. You have your Bluetooth scanners that has like ODB2 app that could tell you the temperature but if you have the car that's sitting overnight that will be sufficient. You know for sure the car is cold and everything. So to do the throttle valve closed position learning we want to start the car make sure the car is just cold and then we want to just let it sit down and idle for a while and bring it up to temperature. We want to get it to around 65 degrees Celsius to 100 which is about 149 degrees Fahrenheit. When we get it up to temperature we're gonna just turn it off. Turn it on, on, let's run, make sure the vehicle tra trail valve moves during, but yeah. So we're just gonna start it, let it go up, up to upper in temperature. We're not gonna drive the car, just let it idle, let it get it warm, and we're gonna turn it off. When we turn it off, we should hear the throttle valve, the throttle bodies clicking, and that would set the closed position. It's gonna start up. Another thing, you can tell if you don't have a scanner or anything like that, is that normally you would see your hot cold side. When the needle is in the middle, or it normally is a little under the middle, you know it's up to operating temperature. So I'll be back, let the car warm up, let it go through its idle and everything like that, and then it's doing really well. And then we'll be back. Okay, guys. I uh, I really don't know what to say. You guys see that engine RPM, right? And you guys see that coolant temperature. For the second stage, we got to be over 147 degrees Fahrenheit, which we are. The car is ideally warmed up. Gauge in the middle. But it's actually freaking idling perfect. Like, I may not even, you guys saw the throttle bodies. They were entirely taken out, they were unplugged, but yet the car is idling right. And the biggest pain in the butt part of this whole process is triggering, 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 is triggering the idle learn procedure but the dang cards island properly so now is the conundrum of should I do the idle learn and go through that whole pain in the butt process or should I just leave the car as is unfortunately for me but fortunate for you guys we're going ahead we're going to complete the process we're going to go with the third step after this let's complete the closed learning system we're going to go and do the third step and do the idle learn. So with the, the, the third set of, what is it, was it officially called? The uh, throttle valve closed position learning. Okay. It says, make sure accelerate pedal is for fully released, turn ignition switch on, turn ignition switch off, then wait 10 seconds. You should hear the throttle valve clicking. So let's go ahead. Let's turn the car off. Let's see if it'll do it by itself. And if not, we'll start it, then turn it off and see if it'll do it again. So let's be quiet and let's listen. So it's 10 seconds. There was a bunch of clicking under the hood. So was within that 10 second time frame it looks like it does the learn let's go ahead turn it back on turn it off and let's listen again to see if we hear the throttle bodies clicking on off. I would say I did it the first time so now we got to do 
the biggest part that's the most annoying part we have to do the idle air learning shut up car now with the idle air learning it's recommended that you go for a drive at least 10 minutes get the trans get the engine get everything really up to temperature before starting this procedure so let's go ahead I'm gonna jump in the car take it for a drive then I'm gonna bring the car back I'm gonna to have to switch everything off because we don't want any electrical load at all this is key no electrical load so I'm gonna to have to pull the fuse for the air ride system disconnect my, my, my um, cam switch off my headlights just switch everything off before I come back to you guys okay guys last part we are going to leave the car off right then we're going to switch ignition on wait for three seconds and after the three seconds we're going to stomp the accelerator pedal five times really fast after we do the five times really fast we're going to wait seven seconds hold it down and keep holding it down for 20 seconds as the 20 seconds is going on you're going to see the check engine light start flashing and then it gets solid around the end of the 20 seconds when it gets solid you can release the accelerator pedal and then within three seconds of releasing you turn the car on let it idle for about 20 seconds turn it off turn it on and then we'll go ahead and give some throttle a little bit so we're going to start let me get a um, timer going I want to do the seven seconds so we turn on wait three seconds hit it five times fast wait seven seconds hold it until the check engine light stops flashing turn on one two three one two three four five one two three four five six seven hold it okay service engine light starting to blink We're going to wait for it to go solid. It's solid. Releasing. Starting to fire. We're going to wait 20 seconds. Justin see the needle move around here a little bit let's switch it off start it back up She's idling good. Now she should be idling anywhere from 700 to 600 RPMs between that range. Let's go hook this up and take a look. There we go. This island between six and seven hundred like before. But we definitely saw when we did the learn, it went up and down a little bit. So 
there we have it. So a, a really clean idle. That needle is not moving at all. So that's pretty awesome. It's been a while. The plugs are really overdue. The throttle bodies wasn't that bad, but while we had it off to get to the plugs, might as well clean it. Car sounds great. She just, just sitting real quiet. So we got two things done. I gotta change oil. I gotta put on that Z1 under shroud that I had sitting in a box for over almost two years now. I think, what else, what else? I think it's majorly just maintenance stuff that I need to get done before we head down to Georgia for Z-Nats. But what do you think? Let me know. So that, that's, that's it for this video, guys. If you made it this far and you know you've watched a couple of the videos already, and you haven't subscribed yet. Come on, guys. It helps me out. It helps the channel out. Just show a quick like, a little quick subscribe. Need to get these numbers up. Let's get this channel growing. But until next time, guys, you are awesome. Let me know in the comments what you think about the video. I will put in the description Frank's video that goes into more depth on how to do the resets and the relearns. So check that out if you're having some issues or post a comment. And then guys, let's get your car running right.